Dear Sir, I cheerfully comply with your request that I would forward you a statement respecting the progress of improvement among your people, the Cherokees. It may not be amiss to state briefly what opportunities I have enjoyed of forming a judgment respecting the state of the Cherokee people. It was four years last October since I came into the nation, during which time I have made it my home, having resided two years at Branyard and the remainder of the time at this place. Though I have not spent very much of the time in traveling, yet I have visited almost every part of the nation except a section on the Northeast. Two annual sessions of the General Council have passed while I have been residing at the seat of government, at which times a great number of the people of all classes from all parts are to be seen. The printed constitution and laws of your nation also you doubtless have. They show your progress in civil polity. As far as my knowledge extends, they are executed with a good degree of efficiency, and their execution meets with not the least hindrance from anything like a spirit of insubordination among the people. Oaths are constantly administered in the courts of justice, and I believe I have never heard of an instance of perjury. It has been well observed by others that the progress of a people in civilizations is to be determined by comparing the present with the past. I can only compare what I see with what I am told has been. The principal chief is about forty years of age. When he was a boy, his father procured him in a good suit of clothes, in the fashion of the sons of civilized people. But he was so ridiculed by his mates as a white boy that he took off his new suit and refused to wear it. The editor of the Cherokee Phoenix is twenty-seven years old. He well remembers that he felt awkward and ashamed of his singularity when he began to wear the dress of a white boy. Now every boy is proud of a civilized suit, and those feel awkward and ashamed of their singularity who are destitute of it. At the last session of the General Council, I scarcely recollect having seen any members who were not clothed in the same manner as the white inhabitants of the neighboring states. And these very few, I am informed that the precise number was four, who were partially clothed in Indian style, were nevertheless very decently attired. The dress of civilized people is general throughout the nation. I have seen, I believe, only one Cherokee woman, and she was an aged woman, away from her home, who was not clothed in any least a decent long gown. At home, only one, a very aged woman, who appeared willing to be seen in original native dress, three or four only, who had, at their own houses, dressed themselves in Indian style, but hid themselves with shame at the approach of a stranger, I am thus particular, because particularity gives more accurate ideas than general statements. Among the elderly men there is yet a considerable portion, I dare not say whether a majority or a minority, who retain the Indian dress in part. The younger men almost all dress like the whites around them, except that the greater number wear a turban instead of a hat. And in cold weather a blanket frequently serves for a cloak. Cloaks, however, are becoming common. There yet remains room for improvement in dress, but that improvement is making with surprising rapidity. The arts of spinning and weaving, the Cherokee women generally put in practice. Most of their garments are of their own spinning and weaving, from cotton, the produce of their own fields, though considerable northern domestic, and much calico is worn, nor is silk uncommon. Numbers of the men wear imported cloths, broadcloths, and many wear mixed cotton and wool, the manufacture of their wives, but the greater part are clothed principally in cotton. Except in the arts of spinning and weaving, but little progress has been made in manufacturers. A few Cherokees, however, are mechanics. The houses of the Cherokees are of all sorts, from an elegant painted or brick mansion down to a very mean log cabin. If we speak, however, of the mass of the people, they live in comfortable log houses, generally one story high, but frequently two, sometimes of hewn logs and sometimes unhewn, commonly with a wooden chimney and a floor of puncheons, or what a New England man would call slabs. Their houses are not generally well furnished. Many have scarcely any furniture, though a few are furnished even elegantly and many decently. Improvement in the furniture of their houses appears to fall after improvement in dress, but at present is making rapid progress. As to education, the number who can read and write English is considerable, though it bears but a moderate proportion to the whole population. Among such, the degree of improvement in intelligence is various. The Cherokee language, as far as I can judge, is read and written 
by a large majority of those between childhood and middle age. Only a few who are much beyond middle age have learned. But it will be asked, is the improvement which has been described general among the people and are full-blooded Indians civilized, or only the half-breeds? I answer that in the description which I have given. I have spoken of the mass of the people without distinction. If it be asked, however, what class are most advanced, I answer, as a general thing, those of mixed blood. They have taken the lead, although some of full blood are as refined as any. But though those of mixed blood are generally in the van, as might Yet naturally the whole be expected, mass of people is on the march. Your sincere friend, Samuel A. Worcester.